Good morning and welcome to Mayor's Weekly. Uh, pleased to be with you on uh, uh, this crisp fall morning. Uh, uh, solo today and I want to talk about talk on two subjects. The first is the paving on Highway 118. That, uh, um, I've had some feedback and uh, Wednesday I was talking with a long time a uh, friend of mine that shared with me a conversation that they had had with a person that was complaining about the uh, the uh, uh, condition of uh, 118 and I really thought that this person would have been able to see the big picture but obviously not and uh, it was compelling to me to talk about this and let's talk about what's going on out there. The first thing that everybody I would hope would understand that nobody in the state of Alabama pays more roads than the state of Alabama. If you drive out on 118 uh, about where uh, Tractor Supply uh, fronts 118, you'll see a sign that says uh, Rebuild Alabama Project. If you'll recall, last year Governor Ivey took the leadership role to pass the gasoline tax to generate funds to do infrastructure work across this state. This is barely a year old, and guess what? This project is happening in Jasper, Alabama. The Department of Transportation has been very, very good to this city. And as I mentioned, nobody pays more roads than the state of Alabama. Probably nobody has more uh, engineers skilled in paving roads and doing it right. And what's happening out there, it is rough as a scrub board. I don't live on a vacuum. I drive on these roads. And, but I can see down the road, I can see what the finished product's going to look like. And if you want to see the finished product, I drove on it just this morning. There's a stretch right in front of Jasper Pickers that will give you a preview of what we're going to have when this project is finished. It's important to note that this is entirely a state project. It's important to note that this effort is not costing the city a single penny. Uh, uh, somebody on Facebook, and I'm not on Facebook, was critiquing the uh, milling back into some of the paving that we've done. Well, that's necessary to make it all come together. And when it's finished, there will be uh, a seamless connection there that you won't see, you won't feel, whatever. So, you know, I, I, I call on you to to, to look at the big picture. Think about what this means to our city. These roads will be paved in a way that they'll serve for 20 or 30 years going forward. Nice roads. Sure, there's some inconvenience, but uh, I understand you can't make everybody happy. There's always somebody that's inclined to complain, complain, complain. But the big picture is we're going to have a freshly asphalted surface highway running through our city from the western boundary lines of the city to the eastern boundary lines of the city. I would commend the State Highway Department how they've approached this. The work's been done at night. It has not uh, in any way interfered with the, the businesses that, uh, that operate along Highway 118. Now, I don't think I've heard a single complaint about the way this has been handled. So please pause and think about the big picture. Sure, it makes your car shake a little bit, it makes noise and whatever, but we're just uh, weeks away from having a nice highway all the way through our city. It didn't cost us a penny, and you think about the funds that are paying for this were authorized probably a year ago or not much over a year ago, and Jasper, Alabama is getting one of the first projects. So I'm pleased about that. I think if you will pause, give it some thought, that you may rethink your position and not be so disgruntled about a road that has a rough surface at this uh, at the present time, because it will be fixed and it'll be fixed long term. The second thing I want to talk about is we draw criticism about incentives for new businesses coming to town, and uh, I can see uh, the position that, uh, that that folks take. And you can argue uh, uh, pro and con, but what I'll tell you about incentives, if you look at municipalities across Alabama, across America, that have done well, the tool of incentives to 
entice retail establishments to come to their municipality is a very effective tool. Um, the, the, the case in point is, I've been in business here for 50 years, why are you not helping me? Well, that in and of itself tells me when I hear that, that the folks don't fully understand how the incentives work. If you look at the largest sales tax producers in this city, I think every one of them, somewhere along the way, municipal government had to use incentives to entice those folks to come to town. Now, this money doesn't flow directly into their coffers. Let's just take a big box door, we won't name a big box door that may have an interest in Jasper. Uh, more times than not, the business itself is not out front. They're working with a developer. They've done their work behind the scenes and they like the market. Maybe they're willing to come. And so they make projections as to what amount of business that they might do in this city. And in those projections, they make an allocation uh, to what they can pay in rent. The developer that would acquire property, build a building, then does a projection on what it would cost to acquire the land, build the building, and oftentimes what the prospect can pay in the way of rent and what the developer has to have in the way of rent to make the project feasible does not match. There's a gap there. And so what the developer does, they come to municipal government and say, look, we need these sort of incentives to make this work, and if you can do this, then we can bring this big box door to your city. And it's up front, top of the table, they're not high-handed, is it? What they tell you is absent these incentives, then uh, uh, the, the retail entity is not coming to this city. Well, uh, is, is that the smart thing to do? <clears throat> I, I think not. If you look at... Uh, uh, Home Depot. Well, there was a lot of resistance to Home Depot coming to Jasper. What I know, something called geo-tracking, that you can track people carrying cell phones, not eavesdrop on their conversations or that sort of thing, and you can monitor the flow to a particular site. In 2019, Home Depot drew 165,000 people <coughs> to this city. <clears throat> Those 165 people carrying cell phones produced a total visits to that site of 812,000 visits to that store. Now, 812,000 visits, and when you look at the distribution of these folks, where they come from, Bear Creek, Alabama, Coleman, Fayette. You bring that many people to town, <clears throat> they drive past other businesses. Maybe they stop and buy something to eat, maybe they buy some clothing, maybe they buy an automobile, that sort of thing. I think you'd have a very, very difficult time saying that sort of uh, draw is not important, you know. And it would be very easy for us to be living under a shelf of rock here, but I think the mindset of this city today is that we're committed to growing. <clears throat> when we grow, when we grow our tax base, we can better fund our schools, <clears throat> we can uh, further enhance the quality of life in this city, or you can just sit dormant and do nothing and live in the past. And uh, uh, you go out to I-22 and you look at Love Truck Stop, predates me being in office, significant incentives were provided to get that business to town, but you look at what's happening there. I'm, I am so excited we have it. So <clears throat> please, uh, as you look at this, uh, back away, be objective, give it uh, uh, fair consideration because incentives are an absolute must in towns the size of Jasper if you're going to attract retail establishment. I talked with Tommy Battle in Huntsville. That market is so vibrant that you people go there and they beg to get in. They don't have to give any incentives. Somewhere along the way, I think Jasper will be at that point. But we're not there today. And if we're going to attract the kind of retail establishments we need to grow this city, then the tool of providing incentives is an absolute must. So I want to share that with you. <clears throat> 
Uh, I welcome your questions. Uh, when you talk about incentives, I could spend to, uh, the, the, the remainder of the day talking about that, the mechanics, how it works. Would be happy to sit down with anybody, work through that. You send me your questions, whatever. And I really think if you, if you approach it with an objective mind, you'll agree that incentives are an absolute must if we're going to grow this city. So those are two things I want to share with you. Uh, next week is Thanksgiving. Uh, I'd like to have some of our staff here to join me uh, and, and wishing you and your family a, a joyous time. COVID will not allow that. So we'll be with you week after next. But again, on behalf of all in municipal government, I hope your Thanksgiving season will be a joyous time. Uh, you spend time with family and, uh, and we'll look forward to being with you week after next. Thank you.